Morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, plenty of updates for you. Just uh, took us a minute getting in here. Um, just notified by uh, PPD of a uh, potential deployment uh, of our folks to Tampa for the at the emergency responders base camp. So potential deployment. Uh, we'll learn more, I'm sure, in the coming minutes and hours. And uh, as always, uh, as we mentioned to you last week, we had uh, a fire department, with, um, a handful of our guys uh, down there uh, to help during Helene, and certainly we're at the ready uh, as the state of Florida goes through another uh, trying time, and our neighbors to the east uh, do so uh, here in the next um, 36, 48 hours. So. Uh, anyway, our, our teams are, are at the ready, and again, we've just been notified this morning of, of that potential deployment to Tampa uh, for some of our PPD officers. Uh, very excited about the uh, FSU Auburn baseball game, a long time coming, and uh, something that uh, I worked on uh, with with FSU. Uh, said, man, you know, I went to FSU when we had them play in this beautiful stadium of ours, and uh, uh, so it's taken quite a probably well over a year of just conversations and and so now it's finally here saturday fall ball game at noon against auburn uh it is completely sold out all standing room tickets are sold out i believe it's sold out in an hour um and uh, the uh but just for a couple notes to to mention for, for folks out there wanting to go uh the parking lot at the wahoo stadium opens up at uh, that 9 a.m they're gonna have a tailgating set up there with a big screen and that's all free uh, so if you want to just be down there uh, during in the atmosphere, you could do that. And then uh, we were notified there'll be a, a, a flyover before the start of the game provided by Training Air Wing 5 at Whiting Field. Um, so uh, that that would be uh, it, one cool part about it is that the air crews uh, that will be flying those two planes will be are, both have FSU and Auburn ties. So um, uh, they'll have a vested interest and I'm sure we'll see them down in the field when they get back as well. Uh, and then game uh, first pitches at noon and uh, so very very excited for that a little follow-up on uh, Bruce Beach after last week uh, the city crews uh, uh, our teams have been working with ECUA and, and DEP uh, to identify the source of the pollution uh, last Friday uh, as you guys uh, know we, we had, uh, give you the update on the on the tests themselves last Friday two suspicious areas were detected uh, following a search of 21 stormwater manhole covers um, uh, as we went up uh, through the stormwater system or in uh, in that basin uh, was uh, there were some suspicious areas at Coil and Government and uh, also at D Street. Uh, yesterday, the Department of Health conducted water sampling at Bruce Beach as well as a stormwater outfall at Washington and Creeping and Main Street and at Corinne Jones Stormwater Pond and we're awaiting those results expected to be back either this afternoon or tomorrow morning. And then uh, some water sampling from Friday by UCUA had showed some an elevated bacteria count. Uh, we do know, uh, apparently UCUA has conducted some video ins inspection of sanitary pipe at Coil and Government. Um, and we'll uh, wait to get a look at that, that footage and, and see what the net, re net result is. Uh, and then our next steps will meet with UCUA and DEP to review all the findings and, and then come up with that next plan of action. So. Um, so, basically, in short, uh, we've been testing things. We've been we've been trying to narrow down uh, how far upstream uh, that it goes, and we've got a couple areas of interest that we're looking at. No, no plant, no thoughts or or uh, theories at this point uh, that have been backed up with anything substantive. Whether it, and it could be anything from a sewer lateral to um, some type of cross connection to. Uh, all sorts of things. So uh, we we're not going to speculate or don't have an answer yet on exactly the cause, but that's exactly what we're doing is we're trying to find uh, find that cause. Um, the uh, let's see, uh, men mentioned the Hurricane Milton response. Uh, we do have uh, some other good news on. We got a uh, Bay, uh, rooftop solar project grant award at Bayview uh, Park or Bayview Community Center. Um, we got a. Uh, We've been awarded a formula grant from the Department of Energy's Energy Efficiency and Conservation Block Grant Program that's designed to assist states, local governments, and tribes in implementing strategies to reduce energy use, fossil fuel emissions, and energy efficiency. So we were awarded $122,000, 122,770, uh, and will be used to support rooftop solar installation at the Baby Community Center. So uh, that's been uh, a long time coming, uh, I believe. Uh, so. Excited to get that, and it'll be the first city-owned facility to have rooftop solar 
and uh, certainly will uh, hopefully the first of many uh, that will help us pave the way for future uh, renewable energy projects. So uh, excited about that. And uh, lastly, uh, Pensacola Airport, uh, if you are flying out of uh, city, uh, Pensacola International tomorrow through the end of the week, just make sure you're checking with your airlines. Central Florida airports have already announced closures uh, of air service as Hurricane Milton obviously moves across the state. Uh, that can affect equipment, that can affect lots of things. So uh, nothing concrete, but I just would uh, warn and caution anybody flying, given the circumstances of the weather this week, uh, make sure you're paying close attention to your flights and uh, you know, potential uh, postponements, cancellations, or delays uh, just because of the unpredictable nature and, and of those closures uh, that are happening at airports uh, uh, south of us. So um, anyway, uh, just make sure you're on, on top of that. And um, I, uh, I know we have one last thing. We I know we have had some a few airlines uh, we, that we've been uh, helping accommodate uh, uh, different equipment that's coming to, uh, to get out of the storm's path and get onto our airport. So uh, we accommodate that. And Matt and his team have done a great job kind of working uh, with 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 not only commercial carriers but others that need to get those planes out of the way. We're we're uh, trying to squeeze in uh, folks on on our space and and make sure that they're safe and their equipment safe. So. Um, that is all I have, and happy to take your questions. Um, Mayor, I know you just mentioned the possible uh, PPE deployment. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can negotiate with the Department of Treasury about PPE. Do you expect any um, other airlines or LA spaces, and how do you plan on getting those deployed? Um, I know PFD has a, a team at the ready, and, and again, I just say potential deployment at this point. That could change today, you know, of course. Um, hour by hour, but uh, PFD, PPD have teams in place. In terms of city facilities, as always in these situations, we kind of take direction either by the state or if it were to be coming closer to us, of course, the county EOC. Um, so uh, that that's uh, that comes up a lot of, well, if it's cold or this, what, what does the city do? We, to make sure we're in alignment, we, we all kind of work in the same direction. Um, and so uh, if we were asked to, to provide a, a facility uh, at, by the, the pertinent authority, certainly we would be, always be open to, to do that. Um, uh, but we haven't made that decision independently. But but yes, you are correct. Uh, we've been notified that the Bay Center is uh, is going to be a you know a potential location uh, that will be open and activated. So uh, again, we're always our, our fire department and police department are amazing. They'll, they're always answer the bell uh, when folks need it, and, uh, and and the city's the same way. We'll certainly uh, when we're called upon to, to help in this effort, we'll we'll be doing it. You mean in terms of just getting debris removed? Yeah, yeah um, you know, there, there's a lot that goes into that process. I mean, we have a separate contractor, you know, the city does, the county does, or, you know, separate vendor that uh, that, that helps us with that. And, and I did, it, part of our emergency plan is identifying those locations of where, uh, of, of where that debris could go. Uh, obviously, they're in an extremely trying, difficult situation right now, given the fact of uh, what's just happened in, in recent days and then, um, uh, with storm surge that had already happened in that Tampa area, if that's where it uh, finally ends up going, and then having to deal with this on top of it, um, certainly I do not. Uh, um, I mean, I, I, I couldn't imagine uh, the difficulty uh, that 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 will uh, offer to to that Tampa St. Pete area. But um, you know, but that's why you have those emergency plans, and and you know, I think the state of Florida does a great job. They're on top of it. Uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned to you guys last week or not. I, I was on the road heading to Jacksonville the morning after Helene had gone through uh, Perry, Florida, and FD, I mean, the inter entire interstate was wide open. Uh, you know, it, when I say wide open, there was trees about three inches from the line, but they went through there overnight, got it all cut down. Uh, I was shocked and amazed by what a great job uh, that FDOT did getting that interstate open immediately after knowing how important and vital that is to, uh, to help with, with recovery efforts. So, um, you know, I, I have full confidence in the, in the state of Florida and Tampa Following those emergency plans, I'm sure they'll be in good shape. And if that happened to us, uh, that's why we have those plans in place, and why um, even last week was a good uh, run through for us. Uh, you know, as a city, even though it didn't hit us, we were going through that that process, and and so um, that was that really ultimately turned out to be a, a good table exercise for the city 
uh, to go through that and see uh, if there's any process improvement. So uh, that'll always be top of mind for us any time we have something coming up. Um, you know, we had uh, Karen Gilliard, uh, who's the Uh, um, well, I, I haven't heard that yet. Not that I'm, I'm not saying what is or isn't true. Uh, certainly, um, uh, if that has happened, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take the, the proper steps, which include uh, not only steps by the city, of course, but as you said, uh, the rail owner uh, and things like that. Um, one question I do get when accidents happen there is, you know, we've talked about putting the chimes up or a warning system up. Uh, that still um, is that will be happening. And uh, we just were putting three or four different projects together all and getting them constructed all at once down there, the, the, the walkthrough under the trestle, all of that. So uh, I do get pinged every time one of the trucks is can open on the top and says, well, why don't they do one of these things? And, you know, uh, our team's got a million things going on and, and that being one of them. Uh, so that is coming. Uh, there will be a warning system for the first time ever at Graffiti Bridge uh, to, to try to pre prevent some of those accidents from, ha from happening. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll have to, in terms of severity and accident, I haven't been briefed on that quite yet. So I, I don't want to speculate or speak to what we do or don't have to do. Yep. Mayor, uh, City Council meets Thursday. Uh, several of the items have to do with the Maritime Park property. Mm -hmm. Could you walk us through that and um, your comment as to the agenda review yesterday is that you're focused as much on action as you are on producing things, could you give us a little, are you unhappy with the pace of development at Maritime Park? What did you mean by action? Well, what I mean is we've been, uh, other than than um, Quint Studer, who owns the baseball team and is the one person that's invested, well, excuse me, Justin Beck group has the small building over there, uh, but other than his office building and um, his attempts at things over the years that, that were thwarted, the YMCA, uh, the Entrepreneur Center for 20 million that would have already been done and, um, and we would have had a conference center and things like that. Um, other than basically two people and really one person mainly, uh, nothing has happened. Uh, there, there's been no action at Maritime Park in 14 years. So um, I, I don't think, I, I think that's, that's not really subjective. I think it's pretty objective to say we've had a lot of empty parcels and not much action. Uh, there we do now, and, and th this council has approved the the, the uh, parcel, you know, the parcel five lease, of course, and and we'll see. Um, uh, you know, I, I, it's no comment on on Inspire specifically about lot five. That's not I, we have action finally. Uh, we've got something going. What we were saying is we are granting extension of these options, uh, but there's additional um, uh, guidelines in in there that say. Yes, you'll have access to the options of these parcels. However, it requires that you continue to move. Um, and uh, I think the, the argument on the developer side is to say, hey, um, if we're the ones investing 100 plus million dollars, $150 million into parcel five, we would want to have some con future control of the, of the parcels, which they've had for, for many years now. Um, but they want to maintain that to kind of see the upside of their initial investment. And I don't think that's an unfair argument to make. Uh, However, uh, the flip side of that is if you have unfettered control of those for years at a time, then that's not that that's kind of playing both sides. It's not really just, you know, uh, the upside. So where we landed on that is, yes, absolutely. If you are willing to invest that amount of money and time uh, into our community and into Maritime Park and uh, you you are excited about further investment, that's great. But we want to see action. We want to. And, and so. Um, those op that option extension, I think, illustrates that, is to say, we're uh, great, we're glad you're interested, but we're going to continue to make sure that these projects are moving forward uh, and not just have what we've had for many years, which is controlled property, real estate marketing that didn't work, you know, I mean, there's all the different iterations, projects that were proposed that, that got thwarted at the 11th hour. I mean, we've had a litany of different reasons why things haven't happened at Maritime Park. Um, and so I'm... Development's tough, and, and nine-figure development is tough. Um, and so things happen. Things could happen on parcel five. There's a re maybe they.
allocate these options you know, after a year, nothing happens, and we go back to the drawing board. That's very much on the table. I can live with that, but what I can't live with is just this uh, you know, control into, uh, you know, in, into the, this I don't know, perpetuity almost that, that uh, you know, may put us in a position where we don't see that action that we want. So, um, so anyway, I, I, the developers are good with it. We're good with it. We say, hey, you know, we want you to go ahead and invest. We know you've spent time and energy and bandwidth into looking into these parcels, uh, but we want to make sure that something's moving. Governor, who's um, doing a lot of press engagement, almost hourly, um, has started talking now about resiliency. Mm -hmm. um, could you give us a quick rundown on where you are leading or want to lead your community in, in terms of resiliency? What are front property development uh, support, buildings of support? Mm -hmm. um, what are your thoughts on that? I know you've talked about it before, but it's in the news now. Yeah. So, um, I'd like to hear your up-to-date thoughts. Well, I, you know, I think you can look at the markers around, uh, and you, whether it be federal grant opportunities uh, for additional resiliency, things that, that we've applied for, uh, stormwater uh, grants that we've applied for, um, our vulnerability assessment. That was, that was a long process. Cynthia and our team in development <laughs> services spent months and months of time um, I, I would say, as we sit here today, we probably have as good of an assessment uh, of where we stand and where, uh, and you, you, you may have seen when, when that report was complete, they presented to council over two different meetings because there's a lot of information. Um, and that information not only is valuable for us to know, but when it comes to grants, when it comes to, you know, what our priorities need to be, uh, I feel like we're in a really good place, um, that, that we have fresh information, uh, fresh data to say, uh, here is where our vulnerabilities lie. So, um, it, it, you know, I think this topic is, is a lot like housing. It's not a step one, step two, step three in perfect order approach. It's how do we, how do we maximize and leverage opportunities? When stormwater grant funding comes available, we go get $25 million of stormwater funding to help, you know, make our downtown more resilient. Um, and we've looked at potential grants. Uh, uh, we've, we've had conversations about a breakwater uh, that being placed out uh, south of Bruce Beach or so south of downtown uh, that would make our downtown more resilient in the storm. So, um, you know, I think it, it takes uh, opportunistic thinking once you have the data that, that we have, which, um, so that's why I feel like we're in a good place right now. Uh, and we'll continue to seize those opportunities and I'm certainly proud of our team and, and how we've been able to do that so far in this specific topic you mentioned. And, uh, and we'll continue to do that every time there's an opportunity that comes across our desk uh, to make us more resilient. We'll absolutely do that, but you see uh, what's happening, and you, this is real. And the data suggests that uh, that you know the, the city over years of time will will need to continue to take steps and and making sure that we're resilient. So, uh, so that that that's our job and our effort to take on, and we'll continue to do it. Yeah, I, well, in terms of the second part of that question, I would leave that to the foundation who's raising the money. Uh, I, what I'd say is the city's done everything we've been asked to do. Uh, I think we've put up money, actually previous to me getting here, I think we had put up some uh, funding. And then when there was some need for clarity around who controls the property, there was some kind of confusion between, you know, the, the foundation and the county saying something and then us. Uh, I think we clarified that. We sent, hey, we own the property and yes, you know, we're okay with them doing it. Um, so, I, you know, at this point, everything the city's been asked to do, we've done. Um, and, you know, this is the, 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 the effort of, of the, the foundation board. And uh, I, I guess at this point, their conversation with TDC in terms of finishing the funding out. So um, I guess, you know, we're at the ready when, when they call us and say funding's ready, we're ready to go. Um, then then we'll, we'll engage from there. But, um, you know, I, yeah, I would, I would defer that. The money, where it would come from, where they stand, I'd defer that to the board. Um, and then I know you've already talked about the issues and there's a lot of press and communication. Um, obviously, you know, we don't know what we're going to find, but is there a possibility that this is going to end up happening at the 
Yeah, it's way too early to, to say that. Um, uh, you know, to be honest with you, over years and generations of time, uh, unfortunately, this area not in the city, in the county, has had uh, problem areas. Uh, we're trying to take this head on and, and be proactive about it. Nothing, nothing um, health-wise or anything stops us from, uh, from putting swimming signs out, opening the second phase of the park. Uh, but as I told uh, everybody last week, you know, the expectation should be that we, that we take our bandwidth away from getting that open and on to how we can fix it. So um, do I think it'll be fixed in a week? No, but, but I wanted to pause the opening of that park until we had at least some clarity on a path forward, which I expect that we'll have, uh, certainly to give you guys by next week, but probably sooner than that, um, of, 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 you know, clarified timeline. It's hard to say what that is because if the results that come in today or tomorrow say one thing or another, then that changes it. So, um, so we're not being intentionally vague in that. We, we want a clarity of a path forward as quickly as possible, trust me. Um, and uh, so we should learn a lot you know, this coming week. And hopefully my goal would be to come back next week with a clear timeline of here's where we go. I don't, I, I'd be uh, happy if I came, came to you next week and said we found the exact source and, and we're, uh, Hope that I'm hopeful about that, but but that may not be realistic. Uh, but at least if we start to continue to hone in on where the problem might be, and and how we can correct it, then I'll be comfortable rescheduling. Um, I, we're not going to hold the, the second phase of the of Bruce Beach for months until we have this exactly right. Uh, what we're going to do is make sure that we're using all of our bandwidth wisely, and that we try to proactively solve this issue. Then we can turn our focus secondarily to. Uh, getting the second part of the park open. The park is basically ready to go. It's behind a fence, you know, at this point. Um, and, and uh, you know, there's value in getting that into the hands of our citizens and our kids and all of that as well, uh, even if the, the water's off limits. But, um, you know, it, it would be way too early to say that it would never be that. Um, what, what I'll say from my experience, I know John asked about this, whether it was designed for swimming or not. Um, you know, I, I will tell you in the early days, uh, and I don't know the discussions that happened in this building from 2018 to now, in the early days as part of the SCAPE you know, leadership that, you know, when Quint helped fund uh, that study, uh, there was lots of conversation of uh, it not being a primary swimming area, not necessarily because of this, but uh, if you look in the history of Bruce Beach and Bruce Pool, um, there, there were drownings there, um, and uh, that, that there was this consideration of a large drop-off um, and that lots of the conversations and what you see in the park itself, lots of the infrastructure is, uh, there's still access to the water, kayaking, you know, things like that. And water quality, of course, whether people are swimming or not is important to us. Um, but, uh, but in the initial days, uh, the, the primary design was not a traditional go out and swim in the water. It was kind of having access to the water, uh, to the waterfront. Uh, but we, what we want is clean water for everybody, whether you're swimming in there or you're not. So, uh, so that remains our top priority for us, and we'll continue to work forward on uh, on that. And hopefully, I come uh, next week with with additional clarity, additional timelines, and then and hopefully a, a rescheduled, you know, a November-ish, you know, rescheduled date to be able to get phase two open. Mayor, uh, I don't mean to restrict your bandwidth at the moment, but uh, I was following up uh, recently on the donations to the Northwest Florida Land Trust for three city properties. Uh -huh. And I noticed on the property appraiser there that those properties were sold by the city of Pensacola in August for various amounts of money. How does that square up with being a donation? Um, I, I don't I, need to put you on the spot about that. Yeah, well, what I can tell you is uh, uh, there's, there's no uh, information that I have that we've collected any uh, uh, money uh, for for property. It, it it was a donation to the land trust, um, uh, as far as the city is concerned. I, I'd have to see exactly. Yeah, what you're. I'm, I'm not trying to avoid that question. I just I don't have any information other than the property is going to be donated and it's going to be three houses that stay affordable. Um, what what a transaction says on a website or anything like that, I'm just not uh, aware. I'm certainly happy to follow up and if, if there uh, if with any pertinent information about how the. Uh, you know, and, and I don't know if we're talking about an actual transaction took place or what that's the value of the property. Uh, I just, I would be speculating to, to answer that right now. But, um, but 
the intent and as far as what's come across my desk, execution remains the same. Donate three parcels, get them in the land trust so we got three houses that are staying affordable forever. So that's the last update have I have. Have you heard from uh, Jennifer Mancini about projects? They, were, they had talked at the time of the vote, uh, hoping to get one of them. Yeah, I, yeah. Like like many many projects uh, we deal with, and the and, and everyone deals with in the private market. Uh, obviously, we've we've had some delays, nothing of, of major significance, but just you know the general idea. And, and look, this is the first time we've done this, and and it's uh, there's already getting attention around home builders associations around the country about this is a good way to partner with your community. This is this could end up being kind of a pilot for other communities and how you do this, uh, but with things that start for the first time tend to you learn a lot through that process but uh, I have not been made aware of any significant uh, issues uh, or, or complexities as to uh, the goal being accomplished I, I you know uh, your typical waiting on materials uh, you know delays that you would have with new construction is all I've been made aware of at this point anything else all right thank you guys